The 700 CC two stroke from myth to legend to mainstream. The rise of the 700. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Over the years and increasingly, there's been a number of prominent 700 builds. There's been supermotos. 700 two stroke supermoto, what we built, uh, it took like two days. It was two days. It was built in Husaberg frames. <laughs> Kawasaki frames. They've been built in Honda frames. It's actually a 700 cubic centimeter engine made in. They've been built in KTM frames. Seven hundred two stroke hill and climb bike. Owner of the bike is here. Mako frames. Even in quads. They've been built into carts and cart like go kart like things. They run on water. Max speed on water is 80 kilometers. And they even run in snow. A right, Mako 700. Or I even built a 660 and I'm almost finishing my 700 right now. So what, only 15 years or so, was either unheard of, a myth, slowly went to legend, to where you may have known about them, but you didn't think you could buy them, to now everybody and their mother, you know, building a 700. Hell, if I even open up the refrigerator, sometimes I find a 700. This isn't even all the bikes. I've seen tons of bikes with Zabel engines in them. All kinds of different frames, all kinds of different setups. This, this video here isn't really about you know, who built a Zabel 700 or anything like that. This is about the 700 going from obscurity into more mainstream and how that journey has happened. It's not really about people who are building them. My thought is that there are probably more people building them now than there used to be. A core set of people who were in these fields where the 700, you know, uh, engines were commonplace, right? And this started back in the 80s. And you can see my video here on how Zabel 700 was built. In the 80s, I'm gonna say you had this core group of people who were on the in, you know, in the know, and 700 is just commonplace, you know? Une recette simple pour un spectacle maximum. Un moteur monocylindre de 500 à 650 cm3 et un attelage en acier placé à... The 90s, I think it was more that you know, started with the sidecars, the um, uh, hill climbers saw those engines, they started using them, and then in the 2000s, I think that's whenever they started being built, or people started using them for supermoto. And then came the trail riding. I talked to Robbie Peterson, who had went over to Europe, seeing some of the guys in Italy or France, hill climb bikes, using those engines, came back to the US and then he also built a bike in the 90s and was riding it in uh, hill climb events. And so that's what I think is the second grade. So I think the first is sidecars, then came hill climb, then came supermoto. The other large big motors that were being built. 
sure how many, but people were building their own engines, putting two engines in. Um, there was Husqvarna's, you know, there was other motors called like Jumbo, there was MTH. So you had other you know, large big bore motors. Now, when we look at the timeline, we're mostly going to talk about um, the 700, the Mako 700. This is generally considered to be the mainstream bike. This is the bike that represents 700. You know, people know this bike. Some people know Zabel. You know, now, but I would say that this was the bike that went to the to the mainstream, the Mako 700. So now we come to the 2000s. In the 2000s, around 2002, 2003, uh, Costler sponsored a supermoto team, and they wanted more power than the 500s they had. So Costler had commissioned to be built the Mako 620 and 685, which later became to be known as a 700. This work was done by Hua Power. Uh, the guy named was Herman W. I'm not going to try to say his last name. So he built the 620 and he built this 685 or 700. So now we're going to enter the 2000s. Okay. So remember, we have this core center of the people who are, you know, in the mix. Then we have this outer loop where it gradiates to the edge of people who have maybe heard of it, right? And so that grew a little bit more whenever Super Hockey's article from 1981 about the Mako 760 was released online on offroad.com. Now, this is whenever I'm going to say that the 700 became myth. That's, that's the time it became a myth. A lot of people heard of it. It was also said it was a bike that you know, only a couple existed. So 700 two-strokes became a myth at that time. Right? A lot of people may have heard of it, may not have heard of it. Um, but there was a bike that had existed. Now, if you go forward after Kosser had commissioned um, Herman to build the 685 and the 620, you had ATK around 2004, you know, like a year or two later, 2004, 2005, um, importing the ATK 700, and that boosted up a little bit further. So the ATK 700 uh, Intimidator is the first part of where people started calling the 685 a 700. There was a number of articles that came out about riding the, the, that bike at that time frame as well. Uh, the original Mako and stuff like that, but I don't think that those ones were widely spread. I think the next huge jump, and this is probably the biggest jump, was Mako International. Whenever they released this white bike, you know, and they started doing tons of press, tons of promotion, even on social media, that's when they became legend. And the reason I'm going to call it legend and then the reason I'm going to say this is a huge expansion, and you can even see some of this in the trends, but that's whenever it sort of blow up a bit because they were really pushing it, but it became legend. And the reason is because they never released those bikes, and nobody really knew, very few people knew you could actually go to Costa and get them. They only saw this white bike. Like, you know, how many people out there have seen this white bike? I mean, it's constantly still coming up. A lot of people just know about that white bike. So that was a big expansion of the mainstream, almost in the mainstream at that time, you know, but not completely mainstream. And so a lot of people heard that bike, they see that bike, in fact they copied a 250 and made you know, this image here. Now at this time also, there were several first videos released onto YouTube. Well, one of the first videos in 2009 was a spectator at a supermoto track and some guy was riding an ATK 700 Intimidator. And so they filmed that bike going into the pits. The second one was the very first Mako 700, which was from a guy in UAE who was riding it in the desert. He released another video as well. Then he deleted a Mark from South Africa about the bike. He sent me videos of it and I released another video. A lot of people saw that. That video had over 2 million views before I took it down. At least two videos. And then I released another video in 2012, which also has several million views. Mako International rebranded as Berkeley VLN but they never released their bikes. 2015 is when I bought my Mako 700. And you can see in the Google Trends that there was a big spike. Now what the Google Trends shows you is the popularity of people searching for that term. 
So it doesn't tell you the number of people who know about that item. This is the people number searching about it. So for people to be searching for something that they don't own or something that is fairly rare, and a lot of people doing it around the same time, does show the spread of that particular item. So when we compare it against the Zable 700 searches, and we compare it against the Mako 685, you can clearly see that the term Mako 700, which has been popularized by ATK and by Mako International, which I continued because it was already being known as a Mako 700, that the 685 term is relatively unknown in searches. Everyone's always searching for the 700. So that is, I think, where we've eventually pushed into the mainstream from legend to mainstream because that video showed a lot of people that the bike actually does exist and you can buy it. A lot of people didn't know that. And then a lot of people started buying it. In fact, CrossFit told me I know we had imported into the United States a long time. And then a lot of people was like, oh, we can buy this thing? Okay, yeah. So then they actually went out and started buying a lot of them. So that's what made the next push. It's not that people had saw some of the original content either. A lot of this is spread through social media, people word of mouth. That's why I'm saying that the 700 has got more mainstream. And part of why I was showing this builds in the beginning was simply because I think that as the 700 itself has gone mainstream, I speculate that the number of 700 builds has also increased with the increasing popularity of or mainstreaming of the 700. And this is only speculation. Um, the only real proof I have are the articles and the builds on YouTube. Uh, but even some of the, one of the couple of builds that I uploaded aren't even from YouTube. They're from builds that people have sent me directly and that aren't on YouTube. So I don't obviously have an accurate count. It's just my speculation. And even I'm building them and I'm not the first. So the, um, the chart you can see is my speculation where you see the center is the number of people who are building 700s or owning 700s who, whose core has increased, but it hasn't increased drastically. Like, it's not like a KTM 300 where everyone owns one. And I think of the outside as a gradient of people who know a lot of information all the way to the people who may have heard of it. And that area, I believe, is also been increasing over the years and these I believe are the uh, major events that have helped to spread or inform people that have then helped spread the word through social media so that is my theory on this in fact I had taken some surveys over the years a couple years ago I took one because I was thinking about making this video for two years now most of it matches up so what I'd like everybody to do now is in the comments just post. Uh, when was the first time you heard of a Mako 700? You know, wherever it was. What year was it? You know, um, or greater than 700. You know, there's a single cylinder, not, not dual cylinders. I'm talking about dual cylinder bikes. Who was the first person to build one? First, if you think about it, you know, everybody builds their own sidecar engine. They've been modified engines since the 80s. And there's how many people in this, you know, running sidecar races? So you're talking about thousands of people already building their own stuff. So who was the first person to build a 700cc you know, bike? Single cylinder, 700 plus cc dirt bike. I know who the first person was to ever build one, but I'm not going to tell you in this video. I'm going to put his story in another video.